But Einstein says Maxwell's equations imply, they imply that we are to take seriously the notion that we all agree on the speed of light. So what does that mean? Well, for the stationary clock, you can see that the light follows the blue path. And for the moving clock, it follows the white path. The white path is self-evidently longer than the blue path, but we all agree on the speed. Therefore, it takes light longer to travel up to the mirror and back again for the moving clock than it does for the stationary clock. Therefore, the moving clock runs slow. Now, when I do that, the, you know, the professionals in the audience probably use this to teach when you teach first years. When I teach first years at Manchester, about half of them think there's a sleight of hand in this argument. They think that I'm somehow pulling the wool over their eyes and there's some trick to it. And they probably go to the pub and debate it for a while and say, what's wrong with this argument? There's nothing wrong with it, of course. It is true. Moving clocks do run slow. And that implies there's no such thing as absolute time either. Because clocks that are moving relative to each other other um, experience, well, from the perspective of each different clock, experience different passages or different rates of passage of time. So you demolish absolute space by simply thinking, and you demolish absolute time from experiment initially, and then by thinking about the consequences. 